Well, hello guys and gals, and welcome back to another edition of Fishing Planet with me, Mr. Moose. Hey, today's video is going to be sort of a newbie guide, a newcomer's guide to how to fish Missouri in the fishing planet. Uh, I've heard a rumor that a lot of people are getting hung up in Missouri, like something like 80% of the people who download the game actually have problems getting through Missouri. So I thought I would do a little tutorial for you guys on how to get through Missouri quickly and painlessly so that you can enjoy the rest of the game. In this, we're gonna discuss some fishing strategy, what gear to buy, lure presentation and just uh i'll also give you some tips on some pitfalls to steer away away from as you level up so you don't lose your money and so that you have a great time in the game so let's get started now at this point i'm going to assume you've done the tutorial which is going to teach you how to cast it's going to teach you how to catch a fish reel it in all that good stuff how to adjust your bobber length and all that good stuff in the game. Uh, it's basically going to get you through to level two. At level two, you're going to have your float rod, a little bit of wheel, uh, a little bit of bait, and you're going to have a fish keeper. So that's where we're at now, and you will be brought to this screen here, which is your map of locations to fish. Now, at level two, you're only going to have Missouri unlocked. It's going to be the first lake that you are going to go fish. But as you progress and as you gain more levels uh, with your XP increasing, you'll unlock all of the different lakes that are available. You've got New York, then you can go to Colorado, North Carolina, Oregon, Florida, and then California. But we're going to be focusing on Missouri today. Now with the gear that we have on us, we can go fish right off the bat. There are a variety of fish that we can fish for. We can do panfish like crappie and bluegill. Uh, we can also do, do catfish, bass, and even pike if we wanted to spend the money and buy a pike license. But for this tutorial, I'm going to tell you that the best way to level up through Missouri is going to be with the bass. Now if you like to catfish, no problem. Go catfish. If you like pan fishing, pan fish. That's fine. And even if you want to go do pickerel, uh, do the pike and catch the pickerel, that would be fine. But my guide, I'm going to tell you that the best way for you to level up quickly and easily is going to be with cat. Uh, is going to be with the bass. So, um, as far as gear that we're going to need, well, we don't really need hardly anything. Uh, if we wanted to, we could jump into the store. We could grab a couple of little extra baits. We've probably got about 20 red worms. You got plenty of bread. You might want to add in some cheese if you wanted to go cat fishing. Um, but that would be the only thing I would buy in the store right now. Otherwise, you're good to go. You should have some hooks. You should have uh, your bobber and all that other stuff. Bobbers, you're never going to lose a bobber. So don't even worry about getting any extra ones right now. All you need is one. So we're geared up. We're ready to go. We've got this little setup here. Ignore all this gear that I have on me right now because I'm at a higher level and, well, I have more gear than you do at this point. But we'll get into some gear in just a little bit. We're going to go fishing, though, right off the bat. So let's go, and we're going to head over to Missouri to do a little fishing. Now, when we travel, keep in, keep in mind travel expense. Every time we go to the lake, we're going to spend $20 just in travel expense. And then for each day we're at the lake, we're going to spend $5. Now... The developers have given you this nice little way to pre-plan the numbers of days that you're there. So let's say you want to be there for seven days, but I'm going to tell you never to use that. The reason why is if you go ahead and prepay for, for days, let's say you say it's a seven day trip and you head on out there and you get there and on the day one you break a reel and or something happens that you have to leave the lake for some reason, you're out 30 bucks that you didn't even need to spend. And again, we want to be frugal with our money, so let's not plan any additional days, though we will be staying at the lake for quite a bit, and I'll explain that when we're there. So let's travel to Missouri, and we'll get ready to fish. So here is Missouri, and as you can see, it's a beautiful little river that runs through here. Uh, you've got a couple of different places you can fish. You've got Pike Challenge which has got a lot of uh, reeds and such up here. Uh, some little sandy shoreline here. Some There's some uh, reeds right here. And it's not a bad place to fish, but a better place to fish is the last songs of summer. Uh, it's got a lot more cover and a lot more opportunities to catch fish. And that's where we're going to head to today to do our fishing. Now, again, we are going to check our fishing guide here. Now, right here underneath our weather, 
for the next week, we are going to see what the peak hours are to fish. We want to check that and consult it every day. So it's going to change for each day that you're at the lake. So for today, our peak fishing is going to be early in the morning and late in the afternoon. And we want to keep that in mind as we're fishing. If the bite tapers off around 9 o'clock and we're hardly catching anything, we can always fast forward time to 3 o'clock in the afternoon and we can start fishing again to try and fill up our fish net. So let's head to the lake. We'll just pick our location and hit go fish. And it's going to bring us up to our fishing location. Now I'm going to close out my chat window so you guys don't have to see what everybody's talking about in this video. Uh, it brings up our float rod that you guys are coming used to using. And I want to go ahead and adjust my float rod to about 30 inches of depth. We're going to be fishing for smallmouth bass, uh, or excuse me, for small young bass. And what we're looking for is areas where they would take cover. Now, a log laying in the water with some grass around it, that's a real good place for them. All over here, we've got some reeds that are sticking out in the water, that's a real good place for them. And we want to remember that young bass like to hang out in those reeds and then they ambush uh, their prey when they come out because remember bass are predators so we want to cast out to those reeds out there now in the tutorial you were taught how to flip your bait out like so well that just isn't going to cut it now that we're fishing for uh, larger fish and we're going to be trying to get out to distances like those reeds there so how do we do that uh, first thing you need to learn how to do is how to cast your float pole and to do that we're going to hit F11 on our keyboard and that's going to change us from pitch mode into casting mode. Now we have the ability to cast out some distance. We can hold down our right key on our mouse or press our right key on our mouse or right button on our mouse. And that's going to bring up an aiming column to show us where to aim. And a lot like a golf game, uh, you know, in, in, in previous uh, golf games, you would have that power click where you click once to activate your stroke. You click another time at the top of your stroke and then finally click a third time to hit the ball. Well, it's sort of like that with this. With your aim cast, you click once to start your power graph going up and then you click a second time for it to actually click. You want your power to be up in that white bar. So click once to start, click again to actually cast, and out I go casting away. And my bobber is out there. It is sitting pretty and we are good to go fishing well. Now, another thing you need to pay close attention to is the drag on your reel. Uh, it defaults to four breaks, uh, which is usually going to be way too much for you when you're fishing. So as soon as you get in, crank that back to about two breaks. That way you can always add, but you, sometimes you're not quick enough to take away. And then in the center, of course, you've got your reel speed that you adjust with your middle mouse wheel. And we're just going to set ours on wide open right now while we're bobber fishing because... There we go, we got a fish on. And we'll just reel our fish in. Now the tutorial teaches you when you strike for a fish, you just have to use your right mouse button to, uh, to strike to catch a fish. I'm going to tell you another thing that you can do is you can also move your rod either to the right or the left. It helps add a little bit more line tension on that strike and it will assure that you get the catch. Now we've got a little young largemouth bass here. And I have premium installed, so I got five bonus points on it. So I got 15 points total for this fish, though it's really only worth 10 points. The five points bonus for premium gave me 15. So if you're not premium, this is only going to be worth about 10. Um, but still, that's pretty good. We don't need that many points to get to level three. So that fish, along with, you know, 10 others, and we're, we're on our way. So let's go ahead and keep him. We'll add him into our fish keeper. And we made a few bucks on him. And we're going to cast right back out to that same place. Now I can do my aim cast or I can just use the regular old power bar by holding down my left mouse button and cast out. So that cast was a little bit different. Like I said, I held my left mouse button, filled up my power bar, let off my, my left mouse button, and I cast it out. We'll let that sit. We're getting a little jiggle on there, which means we're getting a little attention. And uh, hopefully that means we're going to catch us another little young largemouth bass. And we're just using red worms right now. Now how do you find the bottom of the lake? A lot of people don't aren't really sure how to find what depth they want to fish at. 
you know, like largemouth bass like to be close to the bottom of the lake. So we want to find the bottom and then we want to come off of it slightly. To do that, just cast out your leader long, like uh, give yourself about 40 inches of or 50 inches and cast out. If your bobber stands up straight like it is right now, um, you've got plenty of you've, you're actually not touching the bottom. But if your bobber lays over and it's laying on its side, you're touching the bottom and you're not going to catch any fish that way, okay? Fish won't eat off the bottom, uh, so you want to want to make sure that your bait is uh, suspended in the water. So find where your bobber lays over on its side and then come back up just a little bit so it's standing straight up and you know you've got the right depth. So we got another young largemouth bass and we just keep on going. So eventually you would catch enough of those to accumulate enough points to where you could get up to level three. And that is our ultimate goal. We want to get up to level three because then we can buy some more gear and we're going to be able to move on into casting using some artificial lures and such as that to catch our bass. But we'll just keep on fishing. I'll catch one more and then we'll move on. Now, if you wanted to catfish, you'd be fishing a little bit deeper. You'd probably be fishing about 60, 70 inches down uh, out towards the middle here. Um, because catfish are going to be in the channel. Just keep that. They're going to be in deep water. They're going to be in the channel. So they're not going to be right up here next to the bank. Uh, so you'd be casting out, let's say out towards that green canoe that's over there. Uh, maybe about 40 feet out, 50 feet out. And you're going to be about 60, 70 feet down in the water. Using your chick, uh, using your cheese uh, to try and attract them in, so uh, and you'd be good to go. Might want to use a larger hook, um, but that's about it for you. And we'll go over hooks in just a moment. Let's catch one more fish, and we will be good to go. So here's the thing about the bobber on this game. Once a fish starts playing with it, he's pretty much going to take your line. You just have to be patient and wait for him to pull to the side. Uh, this is not one of those situations where a fish is going to tap at it, mess with it, and may never actually bite it. Once a fish initiates contact with it, it's going to keep on messing with it until it actually gives you a chance to set the hook. So there we go. We've got another little young largemouth bass. Now if I check my inventory, which if I press the I button on my keyboard, that's going to bring up my inventory. And if I come over here to the little fish icon with the little lines underneath it, I can see all the fish that I caught so far. And you'll see that each of the fish gives me a little bit of XP. So I've got my XP, but it also gives me cash. And so each of those fish is going to give me $4. $4 and we're just going to keep racking up the money. Now... Once I get up to level three, I'm going to get a reward, which is going to give me some gold coin. And at this point, I've got somewhere around $270 in three coin. But when I get to level three, I'll end up with six coins. And I'm going to end up with however much money you accumulated while you sold your, while you fished. And that's going to be spent on our next trip to the store. One last little tip I want to give you, though, while we're here fishing. When you're fishing on the lake and you're going ahead and fishing up until you get level three. If before you get to level three, you, you fill up your fish stringer, do not leave the lake. A lot of people make this mistake. Remember, every time you leave the lake and come back, you have to pay that $20 travel expense. So instead of leaving the lake, what I want you to do is, when you fill your fish stringer up, come and hit T on your keyboard. That's gonna bring fast forward time up. Now you can adjust your time in increments of one hour, all the way up from one hour to 24 hours. So let's say we fill up our fish keeper and we're done. We can't catch any more fish for money. We want to we want to clear out our fish stringer. Well, we want to fast forward time to 5 a.m. the next day. So in this case, I just go forward 24 hours. I'm going to fast forward time. At midnight of each day, my fish stringer is cleared out and all the fish are sold and I move forward to the next day. So it's 5 a.m. It's gonna ask me, do I want to extend my trip or go home? We're going to extend it. That's gonna cost us $5 for the next day of fishing and we will sell off all of our fish. We've got our XP. This shows us all the fish we have, how much reward we got, did we catch any gold, any penalties that we had to pay. 
all that information is right here for us. We're going to go ahead and say OK by left clicking or hitting the space bar. And now we're good to go. We've got a clear fish stringer and we're ready to fish a second day. And we didn't have to go back out of here and pay any travel expenses. So that's the key to maximizing your time at the lake. Only pay to travel to it one time. Don't leave the lake unless you absolutely have to. If you break something or you need to go to the store for some reason or you absolutely have to go, then that's the only time we're going to leave the lake. The rest of the time when our stringer fills up, we just fast forward time to 5 a.m. the next day and we start all over. Remember, when you start your next day, hit M on your keyboard and that's going to bring up your map and you want to verify what your fish schedule is for today. So now we're on day two, which is actually day one on this menu now, but day two is going to give us a new fishing graph. And the fish graph now is going to show us that our peak times of fishing, because it's a cloudy day, our peak times of fishing are going to be closer to noon, apexing up around 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and then tapering off later in the afternoon. Very important. Every time you advance a day, come back and check what your peak fishing times are. You don't want to be sitting around at 5 a.m. beating your head against the wall because the peak fishing time isn't until noon because it's an overcast day. All right, so we go back. You would go back to fishing. You do your fishing. Once you hit level three, we're going to finish up fishing, accumulate a little bit of, you know, finish up filling up your stringer. And if you've made at least $150, we're going to go to the store and do a little bit of shopping. So at level three, uh, after you've done a little fishing, you've made a little bit of money, uh, when you go into your inventory, as long as you've got let's say 350 275 is what you started with if you're up to about three and a quarter 350 then let's go shopping we're gonna leave the map and we are going to go back to the main menu and we're gonna do a little shopping and I will take you back there and I'll show you what I want you to purchase at level three at level three we're gonna go into the store and we're gonna purchase another rod and reel combo so we can start doing some artificial lures and we can start fishing that way. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to come to tools and equipment. Under tools and equipment I want you to sort it so it is level lowest to first. And we are going to pick up the following items. I want you to buy a hobby gear rod keeper. This allows you to carry two rods instead of just one. So it's very important. Anytime you want to increase the number of rods you have you've got to buy a bigger rod keeper. So if I want four rods at level four, I can buy four and one. We really only need a two rod carrier right now. So we're gonna buy the Hobby Gear two rod carrier for 20 bucks. We're gonna need something to carry our fishing tackle in as well. So we're gonna need a little tackle pouch. And at level three, we can pick up the Easy Go belt pocket and we're gonna pick that up for 15 bucks. So we'll pick up those two items and that's really all we need out of here. While we're in here though, I wanna show you one thing. I want to show you the difference between stringers and fishnets. A lot of people aren't real sure about this when they get into the game. The difference in a stringer and a fishnet is a stringer is actually going to be invasive to the fish. These little hooks, they go through the fish's gill and hold the fish onto the stringer. So once you put one on there, you've damaged the fish, you've injured it, and so you're not going to be able to release it back into the wild. So whatever fish you put on here, you're stuck with it, you have to keep it. With a fish net, you have the ability to release fish because you're putting fish in, it's non-invasive. They're just gonna go in here, hang out in the little basket. And as you catch fish, as you start to fill it up, if you've got 10 big fish and two or three little small ones in there, you can take out the small ones and make room for more big fish. So that's the nice thing about a, a net versus a stringer. Now, the things you need to pay close attention to with both of these is your single fish weight. Three pounds is the single fish weight for your starter stringer as well as the starter fish net. That means that the fish that you catch it cannot weigh any more than three pounds for you to keep it. On the same side the maximum amount of weight is how much weight you can put on the stringer before you have to clear it out and sell all the fish on it. But this first number make sure that that number corresponds to the size of the fish you're going to be fishing for on a particular lake. 
you don't want to head off to a lake where the average fish size is five pounds but your fish stringer will only hold three pound fish so keep that in mind so periodically you're going to have to upgrade your fish stringer to something that will hold a little bit bigger fish so just keep that in mind as you're going along the fish stringer is the most important piece of gear you have in the game without it you can't keep the fish and without keeping the fish you're not making any money all right so we bought ourselves the rod keeper and we bought ourselves a tackle belt. The next thing we need is a rod. We're going to come over to rods and we're going to go to spinning rods. There are different types of rods in the game. Spinning rods are the ones that you put the little spinning reels on. Your telescopic rod is your float rod that you were just fishing for brim with or fishing for the young bass with. Um, your match rod. This is a bigger version. Uh, it's sort of like a it's sort of like a spinning rod, but it's meant for float fishing. So if you want to float fish for bass, uh, catfish, um, any of the bigger carp later on in the game, you're going to need a match rod to be able to float fish for bigger fish. And it'll also allow you to cast further. Your telescopic rods limit you to about 40 to 50 feet on casting. And then the last thing you have is a casting rod. A casting rod goes with your bait casters, which are the reels that look like this right here. That's your bait casting reel, and that's what a casting rod is for. Now, we're going to be buying a spinning rod, and the only one we have available at level 3 is this value spin 6 foot by 3 inch uh, fishing rod for 25 bucks. You're going to pick that up. Then you're going to go to reels, and you're going to pick up a spinning reel. Now, we are going to spend a little bit of our gold here. We have 6 gold, and we're going to buy this Windcast 1500. Guys, this is the best reel you can get in the game up until you get to level 11. So you might as well get it now, go ahead and get it, and you'll be able to use it all the way until 11. Why is it so good? Well, because number one, it's gonna let you put six pound braided line on it. And it has a pretty good drag on it, 4.5 um, um, pound drag on it. You're not gonna need much more than that until you get up to level 11. So we're gonna go ahead and pick up this reel. We're gonna spend four gold on it. And that's gonna leave us two gold left over. That two gold that's left over, we're going to jump over here to line. We're going to go to braided line. At level three, we have the ability to go ahead and pick up uh, a package of uh, the three pound braided line, or it's actually four pound braid. Four pound braided line. It's going to cost us two gold. That's going to wrap the rest of our gold out, but it's very well worth it. This braided line is going to keep you and prevent you from getting snags. And, uh, or it's going to prevent you from losing your lure to snags. Excuse me. It's going to be harder to break, more durable. It's four pound test. It's going to do you really well. So we'll pick that up. We're going to fish with that. So we'll get that four pound braided line and we'll use that at level three as well. All right. So now I've got a rod, a reel, some line. I need some lures. So we'll come over to lures. And what we are going to pick up, we've got these three lures right here available to us at level three. I don't have a whole lot of luck with these slop spoons, but you might try them out. They're seven bucks for a stack of five. Uh, but what I have a lot of luck with is this casting spoon. The 16th ounce number two casting spoon. It's $10 for five of them. I wouldn't go crazy and buy a bunch of them, but maybe five. Uh, you know, five is going to work for you. But if you want to be safe, you could get 10. Um, but I usually, I usually don't lose them. So five usually works for me. Um, so get you five, especially with that braided line, you probably won't lose them. So that's it. That's all the gear we need. We're going to come now over to our little house, which is where all of our equipment is stored in the game. There's two different tabs here. There's a backpack and there's a house. The house is think about it as your home where you keep everything that you own. That's where the majority of your gear is going to be. Your backpack is going to be, you know, your equipment that you're going to take to the lake with you to fish with. So we're going to move the things from the house to the backpack that we're going to take to the lake. Now, in this case, we're going to have our rod that we just purchased. We're going to have our reel and um, our line is going to be in here. I'm going to set this up with the same line that you're going to be using. Just by dragging that over. This is the reel that we just purchased. And then the uh, spoon that we're going to be using is this gold 16th ounce. I'm going to add that in there. And this is exactly the rod, the reel, the line, and the lure that I just told you to buy. Now, my rod holder that's over here is different than yours, but this is where your rod holder will be. You're not going to have a vest right now. 
you're just going to have that little tackle pouch and that's where it's going to go is right here and so you'll have at this point you'll have a tackle pouch you'll have your fish stringer and then you're going to have your um your rod holder don't get confused by the things that i have because mine are a little bit different than what you have but the basic information of this is the same all right so the two rods you should have are this float rod here with a little mono on it, your hook, your bobber, all that good stuff. And then your next rod would be this one right here. Your float rod would be on number one and your casting rod that you just set up would be on number two. All right. I know that's a little bit confusing because I have a lot more spots than you, but I'm not going to go through and rechange everything I own just for a tutorial video because it's a nightmare to get it all fixed back. So, all right, and the other little thing you have over here in this, while we're in this little home area, uh, you have your home, you have your backpack, you have your licenses. All your licenses, if you ever want a quick reference of what licenses you have and which ones you've purchased when they expire, you just come to this tab. It will tell you basic California license and what day it expires for you, uh, and that'll give you all that information. And then when you're in your backpack or in your home, if you want to sort things out, you can come over here and sort it out. The little file cabinet looking thing, that's everything. This is your reels or rods. This is hooks and bobbers, line, lures. And then this is equipment like fish keepers, rod bags, tackle boxes, and things of that nature. And then this is vehicles. They aren't in the game yet, but as you start to add in boats, cars, planes, those things will be under that tab as well for you. Yeah, I said boats, cars, and planes. They will be coming into the game later on in the future. So that's the basic inventory overview for you guys. So uh, now we're baby ready to go back and go fishing. So let's head on back here. We're going to head back to our travel area. And we're going to head back to the waterway and go fishing. So we've got our new setup. We're ready to do some casting with a spinning rod. So we're going to cover how to use our spinning rod and what are some of the techniques to use for lure presentation for you to catch some really good fish. All right, so we're here. We're going to check a look at our waterway because it's all changed because we came back to the river. So we're going to check our peak times again. Now we're back to fishing early in the morning, late in the afternoon. So it's a sunny, bright day. Well, let's go fishing. This time I'm going to close out that little window so you don't have to look at it. I'm going to select our new spinning rod that we just picked up excuse me and we are going to do a little fishing now again pay close attention to your drag every time you change a rod or go into inventory your drag resets to four bars that's too much we want to pull that down to two we can want to adjust our gear speed up to about uh, three for what we're going to be doing today and we're going to cast out here parallel to all these but all these reeds because we've already established there are some young bass right in this area so we're just going to cast over here and we're going to reel our spoon back across through here now the technique i'm going to show you first is called stop and go and basically what we're going to do is we're just going to reel a little bit and stop some people call this start and stop start and go stop and go uh, but basically all you're doing is you're reeling and then letting your lure come to a stop Reeling, letting your lure come to a stop. So see, they call it stop and go in game. And what you're doing is you're basically picking your lure up off the bottom, letting it move forward, and then letting it settle back in and letting the fish see it. And then the fish will get attracted to it and attack it. So we're going to keep our rod tip kind of down when we're doing this. And we'll just kind of pull it in. Reel, stop. And now we got a little fish on. See how I got that little bit of color under my tension bar? That told me that I had a fish pick it up. It's not going to be a big fish. It's going to be a small fish. As you play more in the game, you'll get more aggressive fish, and they'll really light that tension bar up. But right here in the beginning, you'll just see a small little subtle blue, a little bit of green, and that'll let you know that you've got a little fish that hit it. And so there's another young largemouth bass, and we got that on. We're going to cast right back in that same area, guys. Here's the thing, fish grow up in schools. They're born in schools, they're raised in schools, they stay in schools their whole life. So if you catch one, there's a real good chance there's another one there. People complain about hot spots in this game. Hot spots are reality all over the world. So if you find a spot with a lot of fish in it, fish it until you fish it out. 
we'll just keep doing that little start and stop or start and go stop and go whatever you want to call it just real stop real stop real stop maybe pop our rod tip every once in a while if you've got that color stuck down there there we go there's another fish I set the hook on it with my right mouse button and then I just reel it in if I start getting a little drag like that I can pull back on my rod but I don't want to be really aggressive because see how I got that loop in the line that gives the fish a chance to get away so we don't want to be too aggressive with it and just reel in and land that fish and keep that fish and keep at it just keep casting and keep casting in that area until you don't catch any more fish. Then you're going to work your way around the lake and find some more fish. The key to fishing in a lake like this is persistence. You just go at it methodically and be persistent and you will find the fish. If you, A lot of people, their problem is they walk into the fish and they cast here and then they cast over here and then they cast over here. And they're not very methodical about how they go about it. And they miss a lot of stuff. See, I had that little fish on there. It wasn't really aggressive, but it just made the color change on there enough so I could see. Now look, if you get a little loop in your line like that, don't be afraid to move your mouse and pull it over here so you can take up that slack quick. You can also pop your right mouse button a little bit to take that slack in, but be careful not to pop it too much or you'll, uh, you'll end up jerking the fish, these little small fish, all across the map. So what I mean about me, I'm methodical about working your way around the map. If I ran out of fish right here and I needed to find some more, instead of just coming over here and casting, or coming over here and casting, or blindly casting all over the lake trying to find spot cast fine fish, what I need to do is be methodical about it. If I cast out here four or five times and don't catch any more fish, then I need to move over here and cast out four or five times. Then I need to move over here and cast out four or five times. Move over here and cast out four or five times until I catch a fish. When I catch that fish, I need to note the distance that I caught it and where I was casting at when I, when I caught it. And I need to repeat that same thing over again. If I catch another fish, I keep fishing there. And I fish it until I don't catch any more fish and I cast out two or three times. If at that point, then I move on. I come over here. And then I move over here. Maybe I catch a, a fish here and I keep working that area. Then I work it until I don't catch any more fish and I work over here. And then I work over here. And then I work over here. And then I work over here. And so forth and so on. And I work my way slowly and methodically all the way around the lake until I get to here. And then at that point, I can go back over here and say, okay, well, I caught fish here. I caught fish here, I caught fish here, I caught some fish over here, or wherever. And then I can start targeting those areas again and see if there's more fish in there. And that's the way you find fish on the water that you're unfamiliar with. So keep that in mind when you're fishing. Don't just say, well, I didn't catch anything here. I'm just going to pick a spot and cast to it. Be methodical about what you're doing and be persistent. One cast in an area doesn't prove there's no fish there. One cast in that area just may prove at that particular time you didn't, you didn't arouse the fish's interest. So you cast four or five times to that area and then you move on from it. And that's the way you find fish on a lake. Alright, so we've been doing the, st the uh, stop and go method here for fishing. Uh, and that's been the first lure presentation that I showed you. We need to do a couple of more so I can show you a couple of more little lure presentations that'll work for you while you're bass fishing here in Missouri. Now, stop and go is very effective and it works for a lot of people, but another little method is called twitching. Now, twitching is a lot like stop and go in that I'm going to reel, but then I'm going to twitch my rod. I'm going to reel, reel, and then I'm going to twitch my rod. Reel, twitch my rod. And what that does is it gives a little erratic movement to my bait right when I twitch my rod. And that gives a little interest it also slows my bait down in the water, so if I've got a fish coming after it, it'll give it a chance to attack, strike at it, and look, there, caught a fish right there at the very end. How about that? Keep that. But it gives it that little erratic movement. It gives the fish a chance to strike at it, and it also 
it gives you a chance to set a hook if you do have a fish strike at it right there in that time. So we'll do that once again. And I'll cast right back out there. I'm going to keep my rod tipped down. And I'm just going to reel and twitch. Reel and twitch. Reel and twitch. So why am I keeping my rod tipped down? The thing is, is I want to keep my bait close to the bottom of the lake. Because that's where the fish are. The fish are hanging out down around the bottom. And that's where I want to be. Now, it's also going to give me a chance to snag up. If I do snag up, I want to put a little bit of tension on the line. Just kind of work my, work my rod around a little bit. And then just kind of pull up and see if I can get it to release. If it doesn't release immediately, I'm going to add a little tension in. I'm going to bring it up. And there, it popped free. Don't put too much force on it. You'll break the line or you'll break your rod or you'll break your reel. But just put, slowly put a little tension on there and the snag will come free. All right, so, all right, so we're reeling and we're lifting. And I was talking about keeping my rod tip down. If I keep my rod tip down, it's going to keep my bait lower in the water. If I pull my rod tip up and I start reeling, it's going to cause my bait to jump up high in the water. See how that's doing? I want it to be lower down. I want to keep it close to the bottom because that's where my fish are at in this instance. So keep my rod tip down. I give it a little titch. I do run the risk of a snag. Again, I'm snagged up. I'm going to give myself just a little bit more tension so I have control on it and it'll pop it free. There we go. So I'm just going to reel in this last little bit, and we'll cast out again. Now, if you start reeling in quick like I'm doing, keep an eye on your lure. You might find that you got a little fish trailing right behind it and coming in. So we'll cast out a little bit further so we don't snag up as easily this time. And I'm going to give it one more try and see if I can catch a fish. Because technically, that was only my first miss. And I can show you another method that you can use to fish with, and that's going to be called lift and drop. Lift and drop is just a process of picking the lure up off of the ground and dropping it back down, moving it forward slightly at the time. So to do that in the game, in real life, what I would do in real life is I would just pick up my rod tip, and then when I let my rod tip down, I would reel in the slack. So it looks something like this. Now in the game, I don't get very much action on my lure by doing that. So it's not really an effective technique by doing it that way. In the game, I either have to get my lure moving a little bit and then pull it up, or I have to reel and pull up at the same time. So one method is to click your left and right mouse button at the exact same time for like a two or a three count and then let your lure fall. So if we do it right that, I go one, two, three, and let go. And you'll see over on the left, if you're watching my lure presentation, you'll see that it climbed up off the bottom and then it fell down. So we'll do that again, holding down the left and the right mouse button. One, two, three, let go. One, two, three, let go. One, two, three, let go. And that's doing lift and drop. All right, well, I had a little disconnection from the server there, so we'll pick up where we left off. Um, so I was showing you the lift and drop. Again, it's just lift and drop. Lift and drop. And you didn't see it, but I actually caught a fish there right at the end of that last lift and drop. But uh, the disconnect got, got me before I got to land it. Alright, so we've gone through three techniques for you. We've done the stop and go, the lift and drop, and we've shown you a little bit of a twitch. Those three little techniques could do you well while you're bass fishing here. And you just want to continue to use your casting spoon, working around the lake, catching your bass, until you accumulate enough points to get to level four. After you've done a little bit of fishing, You've gotten yourself some fish. You've made it up to level four. You're going to get three more gold coins. We're going to go back to the store and we're going to buy one more lure so that we can fish a little bit longer here in Missouri and get to level five and be done. 
So I'm going to pop back into the store and I'm going to show you what you're going to get when you get to level four. So let's do that now. I'll just hit my little thing. It says, do you want to leave? Yes. It'll give me a summary of what fish I caught, how much XP I got. It'll give me my second screen, which if I was on a multiple day trip, this second screen would be a combination of all the days that I fished. And it would show you how much money you made, what your travel costs were, what your daily expenses were, how many days you were there, how many total fish you caught, all that good information. So that's what that second screen is. I leave out, I head back to the store, and in the store we are going to pick up one thing, and that is going to be a bass jig. So we're going to come into the store, we're going to go over to the left hand side to bass jigs. Again, we're going to sort this level lowest to first. And we'll see that there are two level four jigs that are available. There is a 16th ounce two aught jig, and then there is a quarter ounce two aught jig. What does that mean? That means the head weight on this is one quarter ounce, and that the hook size is two aught. Now, what does that mean? A lot of people get confused by hook sizes. If we go into hooks real quick, I want to show you the difference in hooks. Hooks start off smallest and go to largest in the store. The bigger the number, the smaller the hook. So a number 10 is smaller than an 8, an 8 is smaller than 6, and so forth and so on, all the way down to a number 1. Then it flips around and goes the opposite direction. If you see a number with a 0 behind it, that is called, this is, this is a number 1 hook. This is a 1-aught hook. And a 1-aught hook is smaller than a 2-aught hook which is smaller than a 3-aught, which is smaller than a 4-aught, which is smaller than a 10-aught. So that's the way it goes. Just the number is small, and the bigger the number, the smaller the hook, all the way down to 1. Then, if it's got a 0 behind it, or an aught sign, then you have increasing values increases the size of the hook. All right? So when I tell you that I have a bass lure that has a number 2-aught hook on it, that means it's got this hook here, and it's a pretty big hook. You can see it's bigger than these hooks that you were using for crappie fishing uh, early on because we've been using like a number eight hook. Well, now we're going to be using a two-aught hook when we go to a bass jig. So we're going to go back to our lures, and again, we're going to go to the jigs, bass jigs. And what I want you to get is this quarter ounce two-aught jig. It's three gold, which is going to use all the gold that you'll have at this point. You'll buy you one of those, and that's going to give you five of them total. This is watermelon in color, and it is an outstanding jig for bass. So we'll go back to Missouri now, and we're going to stay there, and we're going to fish until we get level five using that bass jig. So we'll travel back. And we are going to do some more fishing, and we're going to stay right in the same area that we have been fishing and we're just going to work this area to death until we get to level five or six whatever you want to do um, but we'll go into an inventory we're going to change this over and i'm going to find that jig here in my inventory here it is quarter ounce number two drag it over put it into place and now we are ready to go again now this is an outstanding jig I really do love this jig. It is like one of my favorites. You'll use it for a really long time to bass fish. You'll use it in North Carolina. You use it here. Uh, I've even used it for peacocks up in Florida or over in Florida. So uh, it's a very good jig and it's well worth the three gold that you paid for it. All right, so we did change lures. So we need to readjust our drag back to two drag. We want to crank up our reel speed to about three. And this time we're going to cast over here by this willow tree. This set of reeds over here is another good place for you to work for bass and so we're going to cast out over here and then we're going to work this back and we can use any of the three techniques that we used to begin earlier uh, for this uh, i tend to like to just use a little start and stop i like to just kind of get my jig just moving up and down uh, up and down and then maybe use a little twitch in there just to kind of get it going but not as much of a twitch on this as it is just it's a combination of start and stop and and a little twitch because I'm just gonna let it I'm just gonna get it going up enough 
to get it off the bottom and then fall back down and come to a stop. And that little twitch in there is just, it's something I'm used to doing. Pretty much I'm used to doing it because I live on the Gulf Coast and we do a lot of jig fishing and a lot of jigging. And we reel and pop all the time because the fish attack at such speeds. You usually put that little jot in there. It gives that little jerk. It helps, uh, you know, set the hook in the fish's mouth. And so I'm used to doing that a lot. Lift and drop, that's more of a thing for like worm fishing. Uh, if you were doing a Texas rig where you've got the the hook and the worms hooked up weedless on there and then you've got a uh, um, a torpedo weight or a bullet weight that slides up and down your line, uh, you would pitch into some reeds and then you would lift it and reel in your slack. And that's more lift and drop for that. But I, you know, I'll lift and drop this lure even. It'll work for that. Um... All right, so we're just going to work this in, and looks like we got a fish. So there we go. First cast, fish on. That's the thing with this lure is just arch it up, pull it back down, arch it up, pull it back down, and there we go. Largemouth bass, 30 points there. Now, it's a 20-point 20 20 fish, but I got the 10 bonus points because I had the premium membership. So, very cool. And that's the reason you size up to that, because you're going to get the bigger fish with the better bait. And then, again, I'm just going to keep working this same area until I fish it out. So, uh, and that's the, that's the biggest thing to remember is, if you catch a fish there once, go back to it. That fish was about 80 feet out, so uh, I will work, I will cast out and I'll work back into it. But if I consistently am catching at 80 feet, I might not cast nearly as far out the next times. It doesn't hurt to let your bait come to a rest and just sit for a second. You might have a fish that's investigating it, looking at it, and by letting it rest for a second, it gives him a chance to really get right up next to that bait, and then when you start to move it, bam, they'll hit it. I will give you one little tip. The AI in this game don't really feed off of the bottom right now. So when your bait is sitting on the bottom, you're probably not going to get a strike. So nothing right there at that 80 mark. Oh, but there's one right there at 60. Nice. Well, this is a good sized fish. There you go. Another 28 points. So guys, as you see, you can rack up some fish really quick with the right gear. So follow these little strategies that I've given you. Work it, fish it, and have fun with this lake. Like I said, if you stop catching fish, methodically work your way around the river until you find some more fish. And then just pound them hard. And then, what, like I said, once you find a few little hot spots, keep working those hot spots. And you'll get out of Missouri in no time. Um, if you need help, don't forget about the wiki. It's at wiki.fishingplanet.com. It'll give you all the information you need to know about the fish and the waterway that you're fishing on. There's a breakdown for every single river that uh, or in, in fishing location in the game. Look there. 73 I picked up another one right there working that same spot so just keep working through find your fish and just stick with them hammer them until you fish them out 32 points so as you can see in no time you can rack up the fish and get going through here so again don't forget about the wiki for information also guys don't forget about the team speak the information for the team speak is on the wiki uh, that way you can get in there you can join people who are fishing on the same lake as you you can talk to them you can get some information uh, as well as if you're really having a hard time you can catch some of the other more experienced players and talk to them about lure selection and things of that uh, they may not tell you exactly where to catch fish but they will give you some helpful tips that might help you out a little bit all right well, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. There are sorry for the couple of cuts that I had in there. Um, that was just because apparently the guys decided to do server maintenance while I decided to try to record a tutorial. How dare them? But anyways, 
I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did like it for me, you can subscribe to the channel. I try to do some new Fishing Planet stuff uh, periodically here. I'll do more and more as the game progresses. Um, but uh, right here in the beginning, just trying to cover all the lakes, some fishing techniques, some lure presentation, and uh, get people introduced to the game and um, and then uh, try and help everybody out a little bit so I do hope you found this tutorial useful I know it gets a little long but uh, there was a lot of information to cover in it uh, and there's even more that I should be covering uh, I will leave you with two final tips one um, and I, I don't know if I covered this in the beginning or not but I'll reiterate it again for you never buy an extended never buy your unlimited license and never set your home late in this game until you get to level 20 okay don't waste your money hang on to it and um, yeah go from there have fun guys enjoy the game I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next edition until then I'm Mr. Moose thanks for watching bye bye